Android Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people in the Android community. I'm Huen Duet Dao, and I'm speaking with... Muyolua Adeyemi. And we're currently in New York for DroidCon New York, where both of us are speaking. Uh, Moyen, uh, where are you based, and how did you get started in Android? Okay, I live in Lagos, Nigeria, and um, I studied computer science while in university, and um, we had a really active developer community there. Some of my friends knew how to program in Android, and I learned from them. Oh, awesome. And you now work um, on Android uh, at your current job, right? Yeah. And you work for... Off-Grid Electric. And you actually work with another guest of our channel, uh, Anise Davis. Yeah. Uh, he actually gave two talks this week, so Moyen was very, very busy and <laughs> gave two talks at DroidCon New York. And the first one you gave was on Mobile Vision, is that yeah, right? Yeah, Mobile Vision API. Can you tell me and the audience um, what the Mobile, a API, or mobile Vision API, API is all about? I would say it's um, for people who want to build smart apps, but don't want to go through the hassle of um, learning TensorFlow or mm -hmm. training a model or um, having to write algorithms to recognize things. But it, um, as much as it's really useful, it's really limited. It can only detect three things in a picture. Mm -hmm. That's um, a face, a barcode, or text. So yeah. it's a very special, it's super specialized? Yes, yeah, super specialized. Yeah, I, I've heard that a lot about TensorFlow, that it's really powerful, but it can be a little bit like the learning curve is extremely high and yeah. that you have to know a lot of math to use it. Yeah. But that's not true with the Mobile no, Vision no, no, API. No. All you need is to know how to import libraries in Gradle and you're good to go. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, is that an official Google library or? Yeah, it's an official Google library. It's um, part of the Play Services Oh, library. cool. Yeah, it's one of those libraries. I've heard that machine learning requires a lot of training and input of data sets. Is that similar for the Mobile Vision API or is it more just like a a plug and play kind of thing. Yeah, I think it's similar and what makes it work is that um, it's created by Google who already has all of our data. <laughs> so it's, they are pre-trained pre models, mm -hmm. So, um, but it abstracts all the work. Oh, yeah. so that's why it's only limited to like, what did you say, faces? Faces, text, and barcodes. But even the faces are not, it's not like a facial recognition API. Mm -hmm. It only detects the faces. It doesn't know who is in those faces. So how did you get into the Mobile Vision API? Well, I found the code lab as uh, on the code lab site last year at Google I.O. and it looked interesting enough. Mm -hmm. So I tried it out. I tried the face detection API out. Mm -hmm. It was um, really interesting. I wrote a blog post about it and it seemed like something people would like to hear more about. So I went further and to dig deeper into the barcode and the text de detection API. Mm -hmm. I also wrote articles about those, and the, a lot of people started asking me questions about how to use it, and I even got more suggestions when I put the post out on Medium. And what kind of suggestions did you get, like in terms of like how to use it or how to leverage it better? Or well, yeah, some people wanted to like take it further and use it in production apps. Mm -hmm. So we have when you think of things like the Snapchat filters, yeah, you can actually create those with the Mobile Vision API. Oh, really? Oh, because of the face detection? Yeah, because of the face detection, and um, it knows all the landmarks on the face. So some people really wanted to go really deep into it, but to do that, you like need to have an advanced knowledge of Canvas, because mm -hmm. it, all, it all has to do with drawing on the face and the coordinates and everything. So yeah, I couldn't answer some of those questions, <laughs> because I have not really done so much with Canvas. But mm -hmm. How does it work? Like, is the API is it straightforward to use? Yeah, it's really easy to use. So once we have the, imp once we've imported library into Gradle, mm -hmm. we have to add a metadata to the manifest file, and then all you need to do is call the API, and then call some methods on it, and um, we get all. So we, if we have five faces in a picture, for example, mm -hmm. we get all that data into a sparse array, and then we begin querying the sparse array and getting the values from it. That's all. That's really mm -hmm. simple. I mean, and it is there any is there any major difference in using it for face detection versus? Uh, barcodes versus text, is there a big difference in like, I guess how you would have to, I guess the calls you have to make or, or any, any data processing? No, so the major difference is actually between detecting static images and detecting images from the camera. 
Oh. So if you have like static images for mm-hmm. faces, barcode, and text, mm-hmm. it's almost the same way. Mm-hmm. But the major change is when we have to use the camera, that means we have to have a multiprocessor and multiple frames. Mm-hmm. And then we have a pre- camera preview. We have an overlay class since mm-hmm. like there's a steady stream of images. It's not like the static one where right. we have one frame and one picture. Seems very intensive because of like just the amount of data that's coming in with the live stream. Well, yeah. So we are advised to run it on a background thread. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Like, is it, even if you run a background thread, it feels like there's a lot of information coming in. Did you ever run into any, like, performance issues? Or is it pretty just much, is it pretty much like if you don't go crazy, um, you're all right? <laughs> well, uh, I haven't done this in production, so it's not like I've put out apps. Mm-hmm. But I, what I can say is that in the APIs, they, I think they put that into consideration. So you can decide to detect, for the faces, you can decide to detect an accurate mode or fast mode. Oh. So what the accurate mode does is that it's more intensive, mm-hmm. detects almost all the faces, no matter the size, mm-hmm. but it's really slow and resource intensive. But fast mode is um, pretty fast, but not as thorough as the accurate mode is. So there, there's different levels, so kind of different granularities depending yeah. on your use case. And when I guess when I, when I first started Android development, I know that there were a lot of libraries for doing barcode processing, and I guess your mileage might vary on how well they worked for you, but that's cool. That there's actually an official Google API that does not just that that does these very common use cases. I feel like text, like you were saying, text yeah. face detection and um, barcodes. Those are three really popular, I guess, applications for this kind of um, like image processing. So that's really cool. Yeah, and um, one reason I find it really interesting is that as much as we might not build a whole application around this, we might actually find the use case for one of those things in our already existing app. Mm-hmm. Like. Uh, I saw an article the other day that TrueColor had this thing where they allowed users to take pictures of numbers and mm-hmm. then dial those numbers. If I was a developer at TrueColor, I guess I would have gone with the the text detection API mm-hmm. since it does almost the same thing. It's mm-hmm. almost like a, a better usability thing too. I mean, like mm-hmm. I was thinking about it in a very specific use cases, but that is actually really cool. No, well, another use case I thought of was okay, say. I go to a, com- a country like Germany where mm-hmm. I, okay, I know a bit of German thanks to Duolingo. <laughs> <laughs> so all I'll do is whip out my phone, um, overlay my camera mm-hmm. on the text. Mm-hmm. And then since this doesn't do, um, what's it called? Doesn't do language conversion. Mm-hmm. I could decide to maybe send the text I get to the Cloud Vision API and mm-hmm. then it will translate it, send it back, and then I would overlay it on top of right. the German text mm-hmm. in English. Oh, that's so, so it handy. has a lot of interesting use cases. Oh, wow. So yeah. Um, I guess, yeah, you should definitely let your imagination fly with the mobile vision API. I, that yeah. just rhymed. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Well, that's really right. cool. Yeah. Um, well, I believe all, most of the talks at DroidCon New York were recorded. So if you're interested at all in using these APIs or doing something really cool with um, face detection, barcode detection, or text detection, um, you should definitely check out Moyen's talk. So before I let you go, Moyen, I actually wanted to mention also that you are not just an awesome developer and a speaker, but you also um, run a GDG, is that correct? Yeah, I've been organizing GDGs for four years. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> started from school. I was, um, so it's called the GDG OAU for Obafemi Awolowo University. That's OAU for short. Mm-hmm. I was there for two years. Mm-hmm. And then I moved to Lagos after school and joined the one in Lagos. Oh, nice. But we are four organizers. I'm just one of the co-organizers. Mm-hmm. One of the organizers is a GDE, and the other two are really active members of the community. Mm-hmm. And we organize events from time to time. Some of them are the general events. So we have the Deaf Fest, I mm-hmm. Extended, we do all of that. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes we have like weekly events to train people on a particular technology. Mm-hmm. So last year, was it last, was it last year already? We had like an Android fortnightly mm-hmm. kind of event where every two weeks we had a set of developers, one speaker, three hours. Mm-hmm. And the speaker went in depth. I know if you have to speak for three hours, that's you really, a lot. That's yeah, a lot. Yeah. yeah. So it was like a deep dive into some particular aspect of Android development, and we did that for two months. So that's oh. like four sessions. Obviously, if you're in the area and you're interested in Android development, you should definitely get in co- contact with Moyen. 
we have an active Twitter chan- active Twitter handle that's um, at JDG Lagos. Mm-hmm. And um, we are on Meetup. All the GD, GDG organizers around the world are on Meetup. So if if you look for us on Meetup, GD Lagos, you can get info on all our events and sign up to attend, hopefully. Well, you should def- yeah. you definitely should, um, because um, obviously you, got, you, you all are doing a lot of wonderful work uh, and yeah. a lot of community outreach. And if you are in the area and you're, def- and you're interested, um, you should definitely check it out. Yeah. So thank you so much, Moyen. Thank you. Um, if you wanted to find you on the internet, how can they do that? I am on Twitter at Moyen. That's like M O Y H E E N, and then I write on Medium at Moyoluwa. That's M O Y I N O L U W A. Cool. We'll have a, we'll have it all in the show notes and like <laughs> on the screen somewhere around here. But thank you so much. Um, and it was yeah. actually really great meeting you t- um, this year at DroidCon New York. Yeah. Um, check out both of Moyen's talk. Uh, you did one talk again, like we just mentioned, uh, Mobile Vision API. But you also did a talk uh, with Anise Davis yeah, um, about getting your apps offline, which is a very important <laughs> subject these days. So um, please check both of them out and also um, visit them on the interwebs or in Lagos uh, if you're yeah, around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for, for joining us and talking with me today. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, it was an absolute pleasure. And thank you all. And we'll see you next time. Bye.